everyone and welcome back. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Hiva and today I'm here to share with you a flip through of my 2024 Scrappy Spiral Notebook. Uh, I believe I just completed July in my 2024 and I will be sharing a process with you as well. So I feel like I haven't shared my 2024 Spiral Notebook with you as often as I would like to and I haven't shared with you like a flip through in a while. So I thought it would be fun to just take a look and see how it's coming together. Um, again, if you are new here, these are my Scrappy Spiral Notebooks. I do offer these in my shop and I do have a link to my website in the description box for you. So basically my Scrappy Spiral Notebooks are notebooks that I created after using um, kind of a basic boxed idea and I hope I'm making sense. Uh, so it's basically a notebook that I had purchased online and it had boxes in there and I really enjoyed creating in that uh, style, especially that I liked, I like things that go in a certain place, if that makes sense. So uh, that notebook had some faults. There were, the spirals were too small. I always had to change them out myself. The paper wasn't thick enough for stamping. So I always had ghosting. So what I decided to do was to create my own. And I am proud to say that I am the creator of this style and this notebook. So if you're interested in something like this, where the notebook has templates that all you have to do is add your photos and journaling, and it's basically scrapbooking made easy. So if you're looking for something like that, I definitely recommend to check out my website. Now let's get to the flip through. Um, I've shared this before. I am using these digital stamps from Carrie Bradford. I just created it in Canva and made some dividers for myself, but you can definitely use whatever you want. You could even stamp on paper and then just trim it out and add it to your pages. But I just feel like this is a great way for me to kind of, uh, you know, divide up my months and my stories. All right, so let's take a look at January. So I believe I've shared some flip throughs of my layouts for January, but they are just simple stories that's happened throughout the month. I don't document every single story like I used to in my project life. These are just fun little stories that I feel like need to be added in my Scrappy Spiral notebook. I also wanted to mention this was a layout that I created to kind of share how I work in these notebooks. And I didn't want to waste these beautiful photos and this adorable layout. So what I ended up doing is I took out the page from that older or my sampler scrappy spiral notebook. And then I just cut these like lines in between the holes to make it easier for me to add it into my 2024 scrappy spiral notebook. It is so easy to do. I'll share with you in a little bit um, how I do that with just pattern paper as well. It's just a great way to add extra pages to your notebook. And so you'll see here that I there's nothing on the back side because I ended up adding this later on. So now we're jumping into February. I usually have just a few pages a month. I would say between five to seven layouts for each month. Sometimes they, I have four and I'm a-okay with that. I don't put any rules on myself. This is supposed to be an easy way for you to document and that's why you see these boxes on repeat and these templates on repeat because the whole point of this notebook is to keep it simple. But I also do like to add my own stash in here. So you'll see like cards like this that I end up using and adding to my layouts. Like something like this, I didn't have space to journal. So I used a four by six card. And again, all I did was I punched out the holes with my cinch machine and then cut in between the holes and I just literally slip it in. So simple and easy and a great way to add interactive elements in there. Again, another pattern paper that I used. I love this pattern paper and I really, really wanted to use it. So I did the same exact thing, punched it and slipped it in. 
I'm just documenting the release uh, of my new notebooks, my notebook covers and website. I was so excited for this. I can't believe I have my own website now, but uh, we're just going to go ahead and jump into March. I'm documenting my niece's birthday there, my dad's birthday, my sister's birthday. We have a lot of birthdays in the same time. And I added a little tag, very cute and fun way to add your stash into your notebooks. Now my 2025 notebooks have bigger spirals now, so you can even add more. And I shrunk down the amount of paper in the notebook. So you can either you know, add your own paper if you wanted to, or you can get two notebooks for the whole year. But I believe that you can fit a whole year in one notebook, so I wouldn't worry about that. But I also wanted to mention that I do do um, like double page spreads. And so if the story or I have a lot of pictures and the story is big, I'll definitely use two pages for that. And again, adding some more paper in there. And I just love using my paper. I feel so guilty when I don't. So being able to go in and like add some of my paper brings me so much joy. And just documenting Miss Arya becoming part of our family. She's so cute and she's gotten so big and naughty. And I love documenting my dogs. They are the cutest thing ever. We're jumping into April. And here I'm documenting Eid. We were just celebrating with family. Uh, a story about Leith and all his hard work. He goes, he does so much. This kid, I don't know how he does it. But he's such a hard worker and I love him for that. And then we're jumping right into May. I moved Sabine out of Georgia Tech. And so summer has come and I have lots of pictures here. <laughs> so I documented a trip that Leith took uh, for a hike and spent the day there. Love the pictures that he shared with me pool time with my niece. My sister finished her specialist degree. We were so proud of her. So I loved documenting that. Some home renovations, cousins visiting for the weekend. Loved that weekend. Had a great time. More renovations. And um, I always have funny stories about my husband and his renovations. They take a long time, his renovations, but he gets them done. So that's a good thing. Jumping into June, there's a lot of outings going on because both my kids are home now and just documenting Eid again, celebrating with family. Bought Sabine a new car and this was like a whole week situation. We were jumping from one dealership to the other and finally, we found the car for Sabine, the car she loves. And I just like try to fill this page with pictures of her new car and just a little bit of embellishing. Some more poolside photos and just little outings with my kids. Jumping into July now and some babysitting, my niece. I think I did these spreads with my members only. I do share a lot of my Scrappy Spiral Notebook layouts with my uh, members as well. So I punched out holes for this paper, this pattern paper from a Studio Calico kit. And then I messed up. So the way I punched it, I didn't notice that I had changed the measurements on my cinch machine. And the way it punched out, the page, if I slipped it into the spirals, would sit too high and that just got under my skin. Even though a lot of things that I do, I don't really care how it turns out, but that unevenness, every time I flip through my pages, it just got under my skin even more. So I ended up just sticking it to the page. And you can see obviously where I punched out my holes uh, but I thought it looked pretty cool. It looked like, a, I don't know, part of the pattern paper. So I just kept it and I literally just stuck it down right on my page. So to kind of fix the problem. So I think I said we are in July, right? So there's little tidbits on my spreads that need to be filled out. Like I need to add um, some journaling there. Just talking about our poor Aria getting spayed and then uh, some food photos here. 
and I don't think I did a lot for July. Well, actually, no, it's not that bad, but I didn't have as many spreads for July, which I'm a-okay with. Uh, I think I just wanted to wrap up July, and I did decorate August. In August, I went to New York, uh, Brooklyn, New York, with my members, the Peaches, and we got to go to Stationery Fest, so I thought it would be fun to have like a New York theme there. So I basically used some washi tape with my August divider. And I thought I would document a few photos of my trip to New York. Now, I feel like I'm gonna need multiple pages for my trip to New York because I have lots of photos. And I'm trying to not overdo it because, hold on, let me get my journal. I'm already documenting my New York trip in this journal. I've been sharing the process with my members only, and I'll just kind of give you a sneak peek with this. I'll probably share it when I'm done, but I've been uh, documenting all the pictures here. I'm trying really hard to add them all as much as possible because it was such a fun trip and we had so many photos. So I'm gonna try to get them all in here. So really, I don't need to add all the photos here because I'm documenting my trip in here. But I also do want them, a few of them in here because when I flip through my Scrappy Spiral Notebook at the end of the year, I can see those photos as well. So let's start with the two-page spread. And if I feel like I want to do some more, I will. I'll probably print out more pictures or whatever. But for now, I'm going to stick to the two page spread and then I can decide. So I went ahead and printed out my photos and I'm just going to go ahead and add them in the boxes. Working in the Scrappy Spiral Notebook is such an easy and simple way to scrapbook. You have the template set up. You can either stick to the template and use the boxes or ignore the template and create your own boxes if you wanted to or cover up the whole thing. I do a mix and match of both. I use the boxes for some of my photos and you can see here a lot of my photos fit in the boxes. But for example, this photo, I shrunk it a little bit smaller than the box because I wanted to have space to either stamp or add an embellishment. So you can kind of play with it there's no rules. You don't have to stick to, you know, the template and things like that. And again, I created these notebooks to make scrapbooking easy. That's something, if you've been around here for a while, you know that's, that's my motto. Keep it simple. Keep it easy on yourself. Do not overwhelm yourself. It's just paper and photos. And I never overthink these. I really, really don't. Um, like, for example, for a trip like this, I will just basically go through my travel stamps, maybe my New York stamps, my New York stickers, my travel stickers and die cuts, and that's it. And I will just add my photos and add my journaling. And I love that about these notebooks that you do not have to think hard about it. I... I've always liked simple shapes. I'm not a, well, let me say not all shapes because I'm not a circle kind of person. Uh, I, I know you guys know this about me. I don't like like really big embellishments and I don't like too many circles on one spread, but I love boxes because, you know, they just have edges and it's clean and you don't have a lot of empty space. I hope that I'm making sense. Just like with these notebooks, um, everything is simplified and everything has an edge and everything fits in properly. And I love that type of scrapbooking. Even in my traveler's notebooks, as you guys know, I keep things very simple and clean and I prefer to look at a layout like that than something that's extremely busy. Even though I have lots of photos here, I still have a lot of space to add journaling and embellishing and stamping. I also covered up this whole space here. This was literally a box and some gray space 
that I could have probably used for journaling or whatever, but I decided to go big with my photo and cover that space up. I'll probably end up adding an embellishment to my photo and using this top space, which I love for a title. So there's a lot of different ways to use your Scrappy Spiral notebook. Anyways, I have some stickers. Let me grab them. Uh, that I've been using in my New York journal. And so a lot of them are travel themed. There's like New York themed stickers as well. And I thought maybe I could use some of these in here. I really, really like this one. It's just so pretty. And it has like little things like Traveler's Books and the Traveler's Hotel and Diner. It is from the Traveler's Company. I nope. think it would be perfect to add here maybe use that bottom portion for journaling or I could use one of these bigger stickers that I purchased while I was in New York this one would work really well I really like the red in there it matches some of my photos here with the umbrellas this one's really cute as well but it's just too big I feel like and I saw this one earlier. I really like this, but I don't like that it says Paper Plant Co. Love the company Paper Plant Co. But I do not want this on my spread. I could cover it with a label or something, but I don't think I like the colors on that one. This one's too big. Oh, this one's good. Oh, that one looks good actually. Actually, let me think for a second. Maybe I can move this and add that here. No. Okay. I, I think I'm sticking to this. I saw it earlier and I thought this one's a good one to use. And I'm just going to go for it. I know these are pockets, I think so. Are they? Yeah, it is a pocket, but I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to cut off the pocket portion, actually. I just remembered that it was a pocket. Because I will never use it as a pocket. I just want to use this as an embellishment. That looks really good. I love how that looks. I will end up adding my journaling here and maybe stamp New York or something. I do have a New York stamp from Everyday Explorers. Also have this from Kelly Perky. Let's see what we got. Actually, I think I might use this one. I also wanted to mention, if you have not tried my Scrappy Spiral notebooks, they do not bleed. The paper is thick enough that you'll never get any bleed through. Well, this is covered, but you'll never get any bleed through. If you look through my pages, there's no bleed through whatsoever. And I use some like hefty duty inks, so <laughs> you can take my word for it or all the crafters who have purchased my notebooks. But anyways, I like that. I'm just gonna color this in at this point and maybe I'll print my journaling later so I don't waste time. I think I want to add some red to my New York because I want to bring in some of the red from the opposite side of my page. So I'm just going to color in New York and then look for some embellishments for my spread. I'm thinking to look through these stickers while I'm at it and try to see if I find something I could add. I uh, really like that documented. Oh, and that exploring the city is good. Let's see. Maybe that can go here. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, just adding my sticker there. And I do like this a lot. But I do want to look through my die cuts. If I don't find something, I might just go ahead and use that. So this is an older die cut pack from Feed Your Craft and In a Creative Bubble. 
it is my go-to when documenting like traveling and stuff and so i'll just look through it and if i see anything i think i could use i'm just going to add it here but i usually find some good stuff in the, these packs oh that roam is really good oh that one would probably look really good here that's actually really cute i might use that oh and that let's get lost that's a good one too maybe you think i might use this too maybe there no maybe here I can add another photo. Let's see. All right. So let's try out what I pulled. I think I might stick to the Rome die cut there. That would be fun. And this space needs something, but these are probably too big. I think we only ended up with the Rome die cut, which is a-okay. Let me see if I can move this down a little bit. So again, I'm just going to ignore the end of my box here. I'm going to move this down a tiny, tiny bit because I don't want to cover any faces. Like all these peaches are special to me and I want them in the photo and I don't want to cover them up. And that worked really well. I don't think I mentioned <laughs> what these photos are. It's a bunch of photos of me spending time with the peaches in New York for Stationery Fest. Uh, so it's like tidbits of us in Times Square. A lot of it is in line for Stationery Fest. That's Christine and Abby C. Christine is the owner of Everyday Explorers. And then that's the peaches taking a picture with Christine as well. And so there's little photos of some of the peaches here and there. I still have a lot. So I might end up doing another spread in my Scrappy Spiral Notebook because there's photos of us like having dinner together that I really love. We also went and saw the city at night. So I really want to kind of add some of those. So I'm definitely going to be doing a second spread. I really think so. Um, I think that's a good idea. But I want to stamp either New York or Brooklyn. Maybe I should just stamp New York and fill this space with my title. This is going to be my journaling. You know, I wanted to add something here. So maybe I will just go ahead and use that documented sticker if I can get it off. Oh my gosh, she was so stubborn. She wouldn't come off. So I'm going to do like, I think I'm going to do this. So it's connecting the two photos together. All right. So I'm going to go through my alpha stamps and stamp some big title here. Now I have this alpha from Studio Calico and I barely get to use it. So I'm thinking to go ahead and use it here and I think it will fit. So Let's just kind of get an idea. I do do this sometimes where I want to make sure that things fit and I'm not struggling after I stamp it, if that makes sense. So let's see, where's my Y? Yeah, it's not going to fit. It's the stamp is like way too big. Even though it's a really cute stamp. It, or I could layer it. Maybe I can layer it. I really want to use the stamp. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and layer the alphas. And what I mean by that is I'm going to try to get them to sit very, very close to each other. <laughs> and um, hope for the best. And that's something I do all the time. I just hope for the best. If it works out, wonderful. I'm so excited if it does. And if it doesn't, I try to figure out a way to fix it. And believe me, there's always a way. You can cover it with a blank piece of paper or sticker paper. 
we stamp over it. There's also so many different ways to do it. So don't, you know, freak out if you do mess up. So I'm just trying to get these as close as possible. It's already looking really cute. So I'm hoping that I don't regret this. While I'm doing this, I wanted to talk about community. I know a lot of people think like creating a video or posting on YouTube is the hardest part, but it really isn't because you can just post a video on YouTube and walk away. But creating a community, especially in our crafting community, is not an easy task. And I am always so grateful. I've been doing this for a very long time. Uh, you know, scrapbooking, crafting, posting here on YouTube and making connections. And once you find your community, it's the best feeling ever. Um, I always feel like I have the best crafting community out there. The sweetest ladies, the best and the most inspiring. So if you're looking for a community like that, come and join us. The peaches are very welcoming and I'm 100% sure you probably know a lot of them here in our community. Um, they share a lot on Instagram and some of them are here on YouTube. So come and join us. We would love to have you. And we are actually going to Stationery Fest in Chicago in March. So we're really excited to do this again because we had so much fun in New York. We decided that we're going to go to Chicago as well. So if you're looking for a fun community, definitely check out Hibba's Peaches. Anyways, that looks amazing. I love how that turned out. I need to use this alpha more often. I don't know why I don't use it as much. Or maybe I do know I have too many stamps. <laughs> and so I, you know, never have time to use them all. But I think I'm gonna print a photo for this. I'll either put the photo on this side and then this on this side. I'm not sure yet. But I want to print a photo to fill this space up. I want to print my journaling. I think I might use two more pages for New York. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to take a break. I'm going to print out my journaling, print an extra photo, and print the photos for the next two pages. Uh, again, like with these templates, it's very easy to know what size photos you need. So usually I'll just go through my phone, resize all the photos in Canva to fit in the boxes and then I'll come in and put my layout together. So that's what I'll end up doing. I'll probably come back on here and share the rest of my spreads with you. Okay, so I'm back. I took a break and came back to finish my New York trip in my Scrappy Spiral notebook. Um, I also was able to print some journaling and I just added some journaling here. What I did forget was to print a photo for my box here, and that's okay. I will do it later. It's not a big deal, um, but I did print photos for my next two pages, so we can basically jump right into creating. And so basically, this page is done. I just need to print a photo. But like I said, I've already printed my photos for my next two spreads. Again, because you have the boxes, you can go ahead and measure them out, print them out, and have them ready on hand. I usually print photos and then I will just add it with a little clip on the side so I know what photos go where kind of thing on what page. And then when I have time to craft, I'll come in and my photos are already printed and all I have to do is print out the journaling and add the embellishing. Let's get to it. I want to focus on going to Anne Juliet on Broadway 
And so I printed a few photos for that. And basically, I'm going to use this whole page for our Broadway show. And the next page, I printed a larger photo again, and it's going to cover up this top portion. I love doing that, uh, just making the templates my own. And so I really love this photo of some of the peaches. And we also met up with a lot of our crafty friends from online and we went stationary shopping and took this beautiful photo. I have a few more photos here that I want to fill out the boxes with. So we also did get to journal together uh, in our hotel room. I also wanted to add some Uber photos. We took a lot of Ubers while we were in New York and I love this photo. I do love that it has the location and the um, weather and time and stuff like that. So I want to use that one as well. So at this point, that's all the photos. I'm not going to be adding any more photos, but I do want to add embellishments and I want to add stamping. So I'm going to go ahead and stick down my photos. And once you like print those photos out, you're good to go and create and have fun with the process but while I'm sticking these down I did want to mention how amazing uh, this show was we got like I said we got to see Aunt Julia I think I stuck this down crooked let me fix that and it was beautiful we had so so much fun and so happy that we were able to watch that Actually, once we were done watching Aunt Juliet, we were like, we should go watch another Broadway show. But we just didn't have time. I think we went on a Thursday and then we were traveling on uh, Saturday or something. So it didn't work out. It's okay. But anyways, I will stick these down and we will start adding embellishing and stamping. So after I stuck all my photos down, I felt like I wanted to add more. I had a few more photos that I forgot to add. There was like the dinner with the peaches and things like that. So I think I'm going to add a pattern paper. I'm going to go through my pattern paper and try to find something that would fit nicely in the space and have space for me to add photos. So I looked through my pattern paper and I came up with this one. This is an old pattern paper from one of my older classes at Studio Calico. It was all about documenting the people you love and creating an album just about, you know, those certain people. And it's kind of like a breakdown of every single person in your life and how much you love them and how special they are to you. And I still had a pack of those papers that you get when you purchase that class. And if you haven't checked out or taken that class, I will link it in the description box for you. But again, it is on Studio Calico's website and I really enjoyed putting that class together. So anyways, I thought I could add this three by eight, maybe add my journaling here so I don't have to use up any of this space for journaling and add my photos to the back. That would be cool but what I do want to do is actually punch out my holes first so I know where like to add the photos and where to add the journaling because I don't want the holes to go through my journaling and my photos so I'm going to grab my cinch machine and punch out my holes. So there is a technique to this. Uh, it is a little bit tedious but it's been working and what I do is I just grab a pencil and add a line at the first hole here and my last hole here, okay? And then I basically come in here and I line up that first hole with the first hole on my cinch machine because it's not gonna be a perfect, like what is it called, like these, pages are smaller so you want it to be centered here and so as you can see here it's 
is not long enough to cover the whole notebook. So that's why I have to do that with these types of papers. Um, if it's an eight and a half, then you're good because the pages on the spiral notebook are eight and a half. So anyways, I'm talking too much. Anyways, like I said, I'm going to be making sure that this aligns with my hole. And I literally just slide it in and punch. And basically when you come here, they align really nicely. But now I have to align the top portion, which I'll move this down and then I'll do it again. You just need to make sure that you hold down your paper so it doesn't move. But that's about it. Now, my friend Elizabeth has been using her arc to punch these out. And the arc punches out like the mushroom punch. And it's been working for her as well. So if you don't have a cinch machine, you could definitely use that uh, punch. It will still work, the arc or a mushroom punch, doesn't have to be that brand, but I'm gonna say I love my ARC. I've had it for a few years now and really, really enjoying it. Now, all I have to do is I cut right in the center of each hole, so I'm able to slip it into my notebook and hope for the best. So let's try it. <laughs> um, and it worked out did good. I have had boo-boos and I've said this before. I've measured it wrong sometimes, but I ended up sticking it to my page, like directly on my page and it was still fine. But I do like how this ended up looking. It's going to give me space to add some photos there. So I'm going to print out some photos and I'm also going to print out some journaling to add to my three by eight. All right, so I got my journaling and I got my photos and I measured them to fit between the spiral and the edge of my paper. And I think this is gonna be fun maybe to add a little embellishment in between them. So I'm gonna look through my embellishments and try to find something that fits nicely in between these two photos. Hopefully that won't be hard to find or I can use like um, a New York themed sticker or something. Oh, this Discover is nice. But I'd rather have something long or not. That's so cute. Maybe we'll leave it there for now. Oh, this local favorite is good because we did go check out the stationery store. I might add it to my photo or maybe somewhere down here. We'll see. But see, while I'm looking through here, I'm finding embellishments for my pages. This would work really well. Oh, and this one's good too. I like that green. Maybe. I do like that green, the geotag. Oh my gosh. So this one has a little subway. And this photo here is of us on the subway. So maybe I should just use that and write down the destination for that. Oh my gosh, okay, I think I, I wanna do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sticking down the photos. I know it kind of looks busy because I'm working on this like extra page, but it will come together once I'm done. And by the way, these pictures, this is just, actually, let me get this out of here so you can kind of see what I'm documenting. So that's a picture of the peaches, all the peaches that were able to make it to New York. We all went and had dinner together and took a picture. It's just missing a TN there. She had to leave early to drive back home. And then a picture right in front of Stationery Fest. So fun. And then that's us on the subway. So... That's why I felt like that die cut was going to be perfect. I'm going to keep this out real quick so I can stick down my journaling. And basically, I did kind of like a one, two, three. 
and it just fits just right, hopefully. Let's try. It's really hard to get things perfectly within like your punched holes and stuff when it comes to journaling, but I use Canva. I don't know if I've mentioned that before to do my journaling, a lot of my resizing and things like that. So that's something that's really helpful when it comes to printing out your journaling and sizing it. Definitely use Canva and Canva is really easy to use. I always recommend it and it's an easy process the learning. It, there's not a lot of learning that you have to do when using Canva. Okay, so I purposely left this space blank because I was hoping I could stamp something. And because I'm talking about like special people, I'm gonna look through my stamp sets and find something that goes well with that title. So I found this older Studio Calico stamp and it says on here, we just click and it's very true. So I'm just going to stamp that with some black ink and add that right there. And if I can fit a peach somewhere, like a stamped peach, that would be perfect. In my I'm a peach stamp set, I do have a teeny tiny peach. So I'm going to use that to stamp a peach right next to it. So cute. I love this little stamp peach. Is just the perfect size. There is a filler for it, but I'm gonna use my Tombow because I feel like this color kind of matches and I use it all the time. So I know it will probably match. All I have to do now is just add it back into my journal. So basically, if you have more to say, you have a lot of journaling, you could definitely add a card or something. I do it all the time. And I love how this turned out. So fun, great way to add in like extra photos and more journaling. So I have the space here where I might use some of my New York stamps. I think I have a Broadway stamp somewhere here, maybe one of Kelly Perky's. I wish this ticket was bigger where I can stamp it here, but it's very small. So maybe I can stamp the New York like that, or not the New York, the Broadway, and then stamp New York underneath it. No, I don't like that. It's too much stamping in one spot. Let's see if I have a die cut or a sticker. So in my search, I remember I have this washi tape from the washi tape shop. And you guys, I used a lot of it. You can see here, I don't have a lot left, but it has the now playing and I might use it. I mean, if it fits nicely and the colors go really well, with my spread, I could just stick it down here. I did want to apologize for my AC. It is pretty loud in my craft room. It's a good thing because it keeps me cool, but it's very loud. But I really want to go ahead and just document this. But I'm thinking the ticket is just not working with the Broadway on there. I do like this, but I don't like that this is so small. And so I need to figure out how to do this. You know what, actually? Okay, I think I have an idea. I might stamp this on some paper and then kind of do a two ticket kind of thing, kind of layer it. So I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna just grab some white paper. So I'll just stamp it twice and I can color it in two different colors. So I can do kind of like a layering and it kind of looks like an embellishment instead of a stamp. So I'll just color one in 
with this very subtle tan. This is like my go-to Tombow when I just want to add a little bit of color, but not too much, if that makes sense. And it just adds the perfect amount of color to something. And I probably will do maybe a yellow. Let's see. Hopefully this is not too dark, but I think, yeah, this one's good, I think. And I'm just basically going to color that in with this yellow. Now I trim it out. Everything is trimmed out and we're gonna give it a try. Maybe I will do it this way. Maybe actually, I think I'm gonna move this down and because it's washi tape, it's easy to remove but maybe I can tuck my tickets right under the top of the washi tape. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. I'm gonna add some tape. And I'll do something like this. No, wait, do something like that. Slide those like that. Oh, that looks really good. That's fun. Okay, so I made my own embellishments. I really want to kind of stick to the New York theme throughout these two pages. And so if I have to make my own uh, little embellishments, I'm a-okay with that. I will use the space to stamp out and Juliet because I'm just talking about going to this Broadway show. And so I'm going to look for a large alpha for that. I think this one will work and I think I'll have enough space to stamp and Juliet because I can use the ampersand and then stamp out Juliet. Fingers crossed that this works. When I'm stamping in my spiral notebook because it's getting so thick and bulky I will use my hand in the back sometimes to make sure there's nothing in the way or I will add my stamping board. Sometimes I get really lazy and don't get my stamping board like today, but a stamping board does help for sure. And if you are too lazy like I am, you can just use your hand to do that. So I just slide my hand in the back. Let me move it a little bit, maybe somewhere here. And stamp. Ooh, and I got that black. Dang it. I had a feeling that was going to happen because I pressed too hard from the back. So I'll fix that. I'll think about it while I'm stamping. I always end up figuring something out for it. So I'm done with the stamping. I have two things I need to do. I need to fix that blob of black ink and I might end up adding something there. So while I was looking through my washi tape roll, I found this Broadway washi and I know it's not gonna be dark enough to cover this, but what I was thinking is maybe if I added it to some sticker paper, trimmed it out and covered that up and added the Broadway going across would work. We're gonna give it a try. So we will just add it to my sticker paper, something like this. I don't need the star, so I'm gonna trim that off. And then I'm going to cut around here and let's see if this looks good or not actually not bad I could probably still use that star if I trim that out or maybe I just 
I don't need the tape for the star. I can just use the washi. I do want to remove some of the side of the star because it had some like a black border. Maybe add a star there. We're gonna stick that down real quick and see how it looks. Something like that. And then I need something there as well. So I think I know what I wanna do here. I might move this real quick. I'll add it in a bit, but maybe I should stamp using one of these stamp sets. This one has like a cab. There's also the Statue of Liberty. That one would be fun. I think I like the Statue of Liberty. It fills that space nicely and then I can add more stars around it because I know on my washi tape roll, there was more blue stars that I could use. So maybe I can do something like this. And then I can come in here and add some of those stars, something like that. Let me grab some more. Cause I know when I use the Broadway washi on my journal, like my travel journal, I didn't use those stars, so I left those <laughs> on the washi tape roll, thinking I could use them somewhere else. Nothing goes to waste, you guys. Maybe one more. Let's see if I have one more. Oh, oh my gosh, I don't have any more. I finished the roll which is awesome. I've never, well, I have finished washi tape rolls, but never these big ones, which is amazing. Okay. So maybe the two stars is enough. So the question now is, do I color in my title or not? I think I will. Honestly, I feel like it needs some color, but I'm just going with gray with the Statue of Liberty. I know the Statue of Liberty is not gray, but I don't want to add too much color here. And I'll probably color in the clouds in blue, hoping it brings in some more blue to this bottom portion, which turned out pretty cute. Actually matches. So I think I'm going to go ahead and color in my title maybe with this yellow again because I used it for my tag and it will help like add that yellow or spread that yellow around my layout. Now all I have to do is add a little bit of embellishing here. I do love that. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use that here. It's like perfect for the spread. Probably stamp something underneath here. So I thought for stamping underneath my die cut, maybe using one of my stationary and journaling stamps would work best. I do like the in my elements. That's perfect because we were definitely in our element. And so I'll just stamp that. Right underneath my die cut. I think I'm gonna move the die cut a little bit because it looks like it's way up high within the box and I don't like that. So I'm just gonna take this off and move it down a little bit. And then I need to add maybe a stamp there. I think a New York stamp would work. There's a few cute ones on here. Um, what does this one say? I cannot see it. Oh, 
I like that. I think I'm going to use that. So it's just basically where you can fill in where you uptown, downtown. Move it down a little bit. And then there's this that I can use to fill that top portion because I really don't want to add much here, but I do want to fill this space. And so I will just use some yellow ink to match my die cut and stamp that right over that and it fills that space. So at this point, I think I'm done. I just need to stamp the date. Oh, I need to stick this down. Uh, the local favorite is just about the shop we were at, basically. It's not that we were local favorites. We probably were, but I think this turned out better than I expected. And it was so easy to put together. I just need to print a photo for that space. I love the little add-on with the journaling and the photos. I, I will just write down Subway and add the date so fun you guys i love 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 this and i created four spreads for my new york trip in my spiral notebook which was the perfect amount because like i said i do have a journal full of new york photos but anyways you guys let's wrap this up as always i'll be linking everything in the description box for you i hope you enjoyed watching my in real time process video and if you did please give me a thumbs up and if you are new to my channel please consider subscribing and i hope to see you guys very soon bye